In the dead of winter, where snow lines the river bank, you spot a small, clumsy insect making its way across the ice, seemingly without a care in the world. You've managed to stumble across a stonefly. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. So today we're talking about the order Plecoptera, better known as the stoneflies. This is yet another ancient order of insects, and it's thought to be one of the oldest living Neopterous insect groups. Neopterous insects are insects that can fold their wings over their abdomen, and this is as opposed to Paleopterous insects, where their wings are locked in place at rest. Nearly all living winged insects are Neopterous, excluding the Ephemeroptera and the Odonata, the mayflies and the dragonflies. For stoneflies, they fold their hind wings like an accordion over their back, and this folding pattern is called pleating. Uh, think of like a pleated skirt or window blinds. And this is actually how stoneflies got their scientific name. Plecos means pleated or folded in Greek, and terra means wing, so plecoptera means pleated wing. There are some easier ways to identify a stonefly though. One of the more unique traits of stoneflies is that their hind wings are significantly larger than their forewings, where in most insects it's the reverse. These wings are going to be heavily veined and have a grayish tint to them. Stoneflies are also going to have a pretty flattened body, long antennae, and two longish filaments coming off the end of their abdomen called circi. Stoneflies are hemimetabolous, meaning they have an incomplete three-stage metamorphosis from egg to nymph to adult. It all begins when a female stonefly creates a big ol' mass of eggs, sometimes thousands strong. She releases this egg mass into the water, where the eggs drift and scatter across the stream bed. These eggs usually will take a couple weeks to hatch, and then out come what look like miniature stoneflies, just minus the wings. They're flattened, have pretty long antennae, and have those two long circi coming out of the back of their abdomen. However, stonefly nymphs will also have visible gills around where their legs meet their body. Perhaps that gave it away, but stonefly nymphs are fully aquatic. And as we learned in the Mayfly episode, an aquatic nymph can also be referred to as a naiad. The stonefly naiads spend their days hiding about underwater rocks. And this is believed to be where they got their name. Though it's not a particularly uncommon trait for aquatic insects, so figures. Some stonefly naiads are detritivores and will shred up decaying plant matter, uh, others will graze on algae, and others still will prey on other aquatic invertebrates. In some groups, the diet changes as they get larger, starting as herbivorous or as detritivores, and switching to a hunter's diet as they grow in size. You're mainly going to find stoneflies in fast-moving waterways, as they need water with lots of oxygen. Most stonefly naiads will take around a year to develop, and after taking their sweet time to grow and mature, they'll crawl out of the water and molt into their final adult form. Since oftentimes this terrestrial emergence occurs on stones, some say that this is where they got their common name. Common names are weird. Don't worry about it. Anyway, adult stoneflies very rarely eat, and instead they're focused on one thing, making babies. Many stoneflies will find each other through drumming, which is where a male stonefly taps his abdomen on a substrate to send out baby-making signals, which hopefully a female picks up. The females will sometimes drum back, with unique call-and-answer patterns depending on species. Stoneflies are pretty clumsy flyers, so they're not wandering too far from the waterways anyway, so that doesn't hurt their chances at love either. After mating, females will produce those large egg masses and reset the cycle. Adult stoneflies normally only live like a week or two. To make things a little more interesting, some stoneflies will emerge in the middle of winter to mate, producing antifreeze compounds to prevent their bodily fluids from freezing over. You'll see them strutting about the ice, unbothered by the cold, warmed by hopeful thoughts of siring offspring. Emerging in winter probably helps them avoid predation, but it sure looks uncomfortable. 
As for their relation to humans, they mostly keep to themselves. They don't feed on our crops or take refuge in our homes, and overall can be kind of easy to overlook. Unless you're studying water quality. Examining diversity and abundance of aquatic invertebrates can be a great way to assess the health of an aquatic system. Three insect orders in particular stand out, and we call them EPT. The Ephemeroptera, the Plecoptera, and the Trichoptera. The mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies. The aquatic naiads of these three orders are very sensitive to pollution. So if they're abundant and diverse, you've probably got some good water there. But if they're absent, well, I wouldn't drink it. But stonefly pollution sensitivity can also put them at risk. Chemical runoff from pesticides and fertilizers or other pollution sources can taint potential habitat for these clumsy little critters. There are some small scale ways you can help. If you have water on your property or in your community, try to limit your chemical applications and also keep the area free of any unnatural debris. Additionally, the planting of native plants around the waterway can help filter pollutants from the runoff before it reaches the stream. These plants will also help temperature regulate the water through shading and also stabilize the soil to prevent loose sediments from muddying the stream. And one last thing, I know the rock stacks look cool, but every time you take a rock from the water or from the shore, you're removing critical shelter for these aquatic invertebrates. So try to steer clear of this. If you want to go picking up rocks to find some cool aquatic invertebrates, I'm all for it. Just remember to put the rock back exactly where you found it. That'll just about do it for the stoneflies, but if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe to keep up to date with future orders. And if you have any favorite species from this group or any fun stonefly facts I didn't mention, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. Peace everyone.